Hi everyone, this is just going to be a video on how to change the power LED on a Game Boy Color and how to add a power LED for the Game Boy Pocket that doesn't have a power LED. Just because I get asked this often because because of my LED kits, you know, I'm like the LED girl. So anyway, let's start with the Game Boy Color. Now, with the Game Boy Color, the LED is, I have an, um, a spare one here to show that I've taken out already. It's a bit of an odd shape compared to um, traditional 3mm LEDs. This is a normal 3mm LED. They call them straw hat LEDs. As you can see, it's a bit different shape. Um, main, the main thing is that the actual one on the Game Boy Color, which is this one here on the left, it's a bit shorter and a, probably a tiny bit fatter as well. But the 3mm ones uh, that you find are a tiny bit taller. Now, I've had issues before of it hitting through the lens. So that's why I use these flat top LEDs. That's what I use on my kits because just because it allows you that extra couple millimeters. As you can see, this is the Game Boy, the original one, and this is the flat top one. They're more, is that gonna, there we go. It's closer in size. Now the main difference is this is my Game Boy Color that I use. It it just looks more like a dot, the flat top. Wait, I have this on low because I play this Game Boy at night before I go to sleep. So wait, let me just go to full brightness. So you can see, you can't really see when it's full brightness that it's a dot. You can mainly see it when it's a bit lower. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there's a good view of that. Looks more like a dot. It's just more the angle. See there, there, that's a good. You can see it doesn't diffuse. I'm sure you could probably just even um, sand the top of it, the LED a bit, and it would probably help diffuse it. So it's not as much as a, just a straight up circle. So as you can see on the Game Boy Color, it's near the link port. These two standoffs here, they look shiny on mine just because I've already free flowed them. But let's desolder. So first I am just going to add a bit of new solder to these. So just heat it up and then just add a little bit more. That's just because, I mean, Game Boy is 1998, you can see there. What's that, 23 years? The solder joints are old. It's always good to just add a little bit of new solder to them. I'm going to add, use my desolder pump. This is, pumps are the best for through hole parts. Or you can use wick. So yeah, I'm just going to use my pump. So just push it in. Then I'm going to heat the component and the part for a couple seconds and then suck. It did a good job, but I want to take all the solder off and that's what wick is really good for. Wick is the best because it literally sucks up every little bit. I just hold the braid up to it and then heat the part, the pad and the copper at the same time. Never drag it across because that's how you destroy the board and your lift pads. You can drag your iron along the braid but never drag. See I say all this because I learnt the hard way because I taught myself to solder so I learnt the hard way with that. Anyway. Hold the plastic as well because the braid can get really hot, obviously. 
and then you can feel it's a bit loose but so I'm just gonna use the two ed the edges of my solder iron and just push it through and have my fingers on the other side and there we go it's not exactly you should usually see, see how you can see through all these obvious it's easier when there's no solder there so you can put the LED through now you can see these two holes that's the LED where the LED needs to go now we can see the symbol here that little line indicates that this side is the negative and with LEDs we're going to put a green one in the, the longer leg is the positive leg so let's put that through you just have to put a bit of pressure sometimes because it's got the little bumps on the legs and now let's solder heat the pad, heat the part can't see properly because I'm not used to filming and soldering. That should be alright. Let's have a look. There you can see. It's just like a little mountain volcano-y shape. We can trim the legs off now. There we go. That's a good view. You can see those two little right there. Now let's test that out. I have these little battery boxes while I'm going to be putting them on the, my website just because not everyone can afford a full-on expensive power supply like I have. And there we go. The first revision of the Game Boy Pocket CPU one didn't have a power LED and a lot of people like to add it. First we need a resistor for the LED. I'm just using an 804 2K resistor. You could probably use a through hole resistor but I'm just going to use a surface mount one. 805 is a good size. So we're going to attach it from the switch and solder it, one edge of it to the C on the power switch. Now I just need to solder some wire to the other side of that resistor for the positive of the LED. Thread it through that hole that's already there. Okay we need to insulate this hole because that's ground and if the positive lead of the LED attaches to that it will short. So I'm just going to get some capped on tape and then I'm just going to poke a hole in it with my tweezers to feed the wire through. Just a close up, see, see on the power switch a 2K resistor. That's what I chose. I don't know, it depends on how bright you want your LED to be. Wire through the hole through the little hole in the capped on tape to insulate. Now let's cut this wire down a tiny bit and trim it. Now the LED, the longer leg is the positive and that's the one that we need to add to the wire. So I'm just going to trim the positive leg a bit so 
so we know we put trim to the positive leg. Now let's just add a bit of solder to that positive leg that we trimmed. Just going to solder that trimmed leg to the wire. We already added solder before, so you're just remounting it on there. Just tuck it a little so we know it's there. So I lost the footage of me attaching the ground leg, but pretty much what I did was I trimmed the ground leg as well, which is this side, and I attached a wire and I attach it to this standoff here. So that keeps the wire, the LED loose, which I prefer in a way because then it's just a lot easier to place it into the shell. Here's a shell as an example. This was made for me by Joseph Chompkins. Really cool shell. I'm waiting to make a pocket color in it anyway. As you can see, you just thread the LED through the hole. And just test it. Power on. And there we have our power LED. I hope this um, helped. I'm not really trying to be a YouTuber. I'm just trying to spread information as easy as I can. So thanks for watching.